You know, but, no, I want to show you a picture first. This was um, from my office. I don't know if everybody could see it, but um, like pretty bland office, right? Couldn't they use some plants? Like, I mean, we need some color in this. Anybody here, a designer, come down and help us out. It's like they could care less about plants, just make money. And um, I have an office, but then there's this other computer um, that I have to sit at sometimes that does something different than the other computers do. And, and I've just been making it um, a daily habit to have a bunch of these cups that we have here and taking it with me. And before I start work, I have communion in the morning. And, and it's been an amazing transforming discipline. I'm not saying you all have to do this. I'm just saying what the Lord's been doing in, in my life and, and how I've been seeking him. And um, I happened to be kneeling at that desk. And, and right as I was breaking the bread and having the cup, I looked up. <laughs> And that's what I saw on the wall. I had never seen a cross on the wall. And what it was was the sun was coming up, and it was going through the window right on the cross pane. <laughs> and it was exactly as I was starting to pray. Now, you know, take it for whatever you want. But to me, it was a confirmation that in the midst of a really, like, secular setting, it, it, God still shows up. And he makes himself real to you in a way that you know it's him. That's the best I could tell you. Because 10 minutes later, it was gone because the sun kept moving up and it wasn't there. It just happened to be that exact time as I was about to you know, pray and, and break the bread. I looked up and boom, his cross was right in front of my face. I don't think that's coincidence. But I don't want to make more of it either. Like that, that, that was there and then it went. And it's what happens. Like John Wimber used to call it grace lit. It's like a gracelet that God just gives you. It doesn't last, but you get a sense of his presence, and a window opens, and you get like a, a power charge of like, yeah, that's right, you are here, regardless of the drama. And one of the bosses says, keep your drama for your mama. <laughs> but they don't. They keep the drama going. Like, it's constant. Uh, but it's a good saying. All right, so then um, I'm going to give you the next verse, which is from John 12. And um, Jesus said, now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose. Can you say that with me? For this purpose. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And what was the purpose? The cross. This is right before the cross. That's John 12, and John 13 is when he has the Last Supper and he washes the disciples' feet, and then that's the last thing he does with them before he goes to the garden, and they take him, and they crucify him, right? So he's groaning over what he's about to do, but he says, no, if my soul is trouble, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? And the implication is, no, I'm not going to say, Father, save me. For this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. What a great prayer for us, that, that God's name would be glorified through our lives. And uh, do we have to go physically get nailed to a cross? No, but, but we are expected to surrender our agenda and take on his agenda. That's what he meant when he said, if you want to find your life, you must lose the agenda that you think is right for you, and you must find the agenda that I have for you, because I'm your dad, and I know what's best for you, and I'm going to put boundary lines of where your behavior should go. And you know, you can cross the boundary line if you want, but if you want the blessing, be obedient. If you cross the boundary line, then you kind of remove yourself out from the blessing. And then, you know, you don't want to go there. <laughs> and then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it, Father saying my name, glorified my name, and will glorify it again. The voice didn't come because of me, Jesus says, but for your sake. Now the judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Um, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Can you just think about that for a minute? Who's the ruler of the world that he's talking about? Yeah. Has he been fully cast out? But has he been defanged? <laughs> because we have this immune system on the inside of us, the word of God. The relationship with the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, that through the cross and the resurrection, once he came out of the tomb and he said, it's good that I go because now the comforter can come. And now every one of us that says Jesus is Lord, has Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, 
Granted, there are different manifestations of that, but the Bible's very clear. You can't say Jesus is Lord unless the Holy Spirit is in there. Isn't that awesome? So you could stand on this promise that the ruler of this world is cast out of your life. And he does not have dominion. The Lord has dominion. In the weakness of our flesh, sometimes we slip back into destructive behavior or, or things that are not redeemed. But that doesn't mean God casts us away. We're always in relationship with him. We're son. We've been adopted. Our spirit cries, Abba, Father. We may disappoint him, but we never lose relationship. And we can always say, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse all iniquity out of our lives. So the ruler of this world will be cast out. And if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples, all men, as you say in the King James, but ladies are included. If I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people, all men and women, unto me. Amen. I found a new use for my stool. Isn't this cool? I'm telling you, it's a multi-purpose wonder. And I'm not in any way demeaning the, the sacrifice that Jesus paid, but he was willing to get nailed to this cross for me. <laughs> if I was the only one, right? If you were the only one, he would have still given his life. And it wasn't just for one person, but it was all of us. And as he's having that last supper with them, he says, when you have this Passover meal, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. So the way that's been translating into my life is just when I kneel down in the morning before I start, I try not to have anything else to eat first because I think symbolically it's really good that the first thing I taste in the morning is that wafer. It doesn't taste very good, but that's okay. It's, a, it's supposed to represent our flesh. And you break it first to remind yourself that you're not in charge. <laughs> that he is in charge, and that he identified with the weakness of my flesh. And I don't become fragmented when I take him. I become unified. It's not supernatural power. I don't believe in transubstantiation. It's not the actual body and blood of Jesus. It represents that. But my spirit needs a reminder. <laughs> you know, they say Italian, Gabados look could be a little thick head. If Trisha was here, she'd say amen. Stubborn, you know, like stiff-necked sometimes. So this, this posture, this position of kneeling and, and breaking something to say, Lord, you know, I really don't want to try to do this on my own today. I really need your help. I, I really need your help in order to get whatever this is done today. Again, you don't have to make it a religious experience. You don't have to do it. But the communion that we're going to take today, I, I do want to just say, you know, how important it is. Um, you know, we don't use the word sacrament often. But that's not a bad word. It's not a religious word. It's a holy thing. Sacrament's a holy thing. Communion's one of them. Baptism is one of them. There's many. Marriage is one of them, right? It's, it's just elevated to something that God considers really sacred. And he cares about what color my shoes are, but that's not a sacrament. I hate to break that news to some folks about shoes, but you know, this is really important to God that when we do it, we do it with the right attitude. 